GM, GM. Welcome to Web3 Academy, a place for entrepreneurs, businesses, and creators to explore and learn how to use Web3 to transform business models and build thriving communities. I'm Jaybird. I'm coming at you from Paris this week. And I'm here to keep you on the forefront of technology so that you don't fall behind. Friends, it is the weekly deep dive, and I've got a killer episode for you today. Super stoked. We're going to be talking about what is CC0? How do you understand NFT IP ownership rights? And some predictions for the future. Some really exciting predictions. Some things I'm pumped to talk about, including the biggest projects in the next decade, I believe, will be CC0. A Board Ape Yacht Club NFT collector will have their IP license revoked. I think that's going to happen in the next few years. And my final prediction, there will be a clear playbook for NFT collectors to become millionaires from NFT IP licenses. But before I jump into today's podcast, let me ask you a question. Would you like to get whitelisted for Lens Protocol? I know I would, and I know I was lucky enough to get whitelisted. Well, because we've got such good friends over at Lens, we've decided to whitelist everybody who listens to Web3 Academy or checks us out on YouTube. All you've got to do is follow us on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and YouTube. Take a screenshot across all these platforms and then post it on our Twitter. Reply to our pinned tweet on Twitter. You can find us at Web3 Academy underscore. Once you've done that, we'll give you an opportunity to make sure that we get your wallet address, and then we'll hook you up with Whitelist for Lens Protocol. You know why you want Whitelist for Lens Protocol? Because you want your name. You want, I wanted jbird.lens. I want at jbird. You know, on Twitter, I'm not at jbird. On Twitter, Web3 Academy is Web3 Academy underscore. I wish we had Web3 Academy. Well, if you get whitelisted for Lens, you're going to be able to get there first and you're going to make sure that you get your brand name, whether it's your personal name or whether it's your business name, you're going to get hooked up. And we believe Lens is going to be huge. Uh, so it's going to be, I think, the biggest long term. We're going to see most social media built on top of Lens in the next decade. And so this is our way of keeping you on the forefront of innovation and making sure that you are in the leading space with your brand name. Okay, let's get to today's article. It's the deep dive and we're deep diving on what is CC0 and how do you understand all the different forms of NFT, IP, or intellectual property ownership rights. To be or not to be, that is the question. This is one of the most famous lines written by William Shakespeare. This line, along with all of the works of Shakespeare, are in the public domain. As such, anyone is free to copy, perform, edit, remake, or commercialize the work without permission from the creator. That's right. Whenever anybody takes any Shakespeare work, they make a movie, they write a play, they put it on a t-shirt, it's free. They're allowed to do that. They don't have to license it from anybody. You can go do that right now for free and you can commercialize it. You can sell it. You can make money off it. It's all in the public domain. Public domain is the same thing as CC0 or Creative Commons Zero is what CC0 stands for. I will use those two public domain and CC0 interchangeably throughout this article. Now, when an NFT project decides to be CC0, they are giving ownership of their IP to the general public. So the question on everyone's mind is, why would an NFT project decide to give up ownership rights of their IP? Sounds funny, doesn't it? And is CC0 good or bad for a project? Where does this lead us? What does this mean? What are the benefits? Well, we're going to jump into all of those today. Now, the answer to whether or not it's good for a project depends largely on the project objectives. Right now, my aim is to help you understand CC0 
along with the other commonly used IP rights from the perspective of a creator, a business, and an NFT collector so that you can decide what makes the most sense. Now, I want to be clear. I'm an adoption maxi. My mission is to help traditional businesses adopt Web3 because Web3 is a new layer of the internet that enriches so many areas of our lives. Blockchain technology has the potential to vastly improve currency, property rights, organizational structures, identity, and so much more. So regardless of which IP rights an NFT project decides to use, what matters more is that we participate, that we play, drop an NFT, climb into the Web3 sandbox, and experiment. Now, I want to be clear. IP ownership rights are just tools in the creator toolkit. The creator toolkit has absolutely exploded in the last decade with the rise of Web2, of social media, of the creator economy, of the opportunity to create and make an income without needing a large company behind you because distribution has changed. We're not going to get into that whole side of it, but I want to be clear. IP ownership are just a tool in the creator toolkit. So CC0 is a tool. Licensing is a tool. Trademark is a tool. Copyright is a tool. Tools are a means to an end. So before pulling out your hammer and looking for nails, make sure you clearly write down your objective. If you're not clear on your objective, don't start using your tool. All right, you got to get clear on your objective first. Take the time to be very clear on your why. Why do you exist? What's your mission? What's your purpose? And what's your objective? Then once you're clear on that, choose the IP ownership rights that will facilitate your desired outcome. Now, it's often clear to us that artists and businesses have different objectives. One focused on sharing their art, the other focused on profit. So here is a very overly simplified view of my current beliefs in which projects should use CC0. Now, I want to be clear, this is overly simplified because we're so early in the CC0 experiment, but here's my view. If your goal is to build a content or media business focused on maximizing profit within the next three to five years, then I would retain IP ownership. If your goal is to run a grand experiment focused on composable culture with long-term timelines, then CC0 is the way to go. The spectrum of ownership of IP ownership rights from CC0 to all rights reserved is wide. It's a wide spectrum. There's so many variations in the middle. So whatever a project chooses, here's what matters most is that you communicate that with your community. You communicate your goals and you communicate your intentions to your community. If you are launching an NFT, you need to think about your community now more than ever. Most important is to always be upfront with your community. So if you don't know what IP ownership you should do, make that clear. The natural starting point for a project is to have controlled IP to retain ownership to the creator. That is the natural starting point. And if that's your starting point, that's fine. But if you don't know, if you think you might do CC0, if you're not sure, just communicate that. Be upfront with your community and be part of, make decisions together, all right? That is what matters most. Also, you need to know CC0 is irreversible. It's permanent. Once you do it, you cannot go backwards on it. So don't rush into this decision. Now, what makes CC0 such an interesting and fascinating tool is that we're so early in the experiment. And when we're early, it's always fun to talk about because we can dream and there's so much potential and who knows where it goes. And as I said, I think it's going to big places, but how does that work? What's it look like? Well, only time will tell. Now, everyone keeps saying that CC0 is the next slice bread, but let's be clear here. Public goods and public domain rights have been around for a long time. In fact, we've seen many ownership, IP ownership formats play out for centuries from centralized protected IP rights, you know, Disney being the biggest example of that, Mickey Mouse also an example of that. Quick side note, the earliest versions of Mickey Mouse become 
public domain, I believe in 2024, it's, it's very soon. That will be a very interesting story to follow. How will that play out? Obviously, Disney will fight that, but it's pretty tough to fight usually when somebody tries to fight these, these public domain uh, battles in courts. It just draws it out a few years, but eventually it does become public domain. So watch out for that one. Um, we've also seen public domain rights play out for centuries. Shakespeare, Sherlock Holmes, the Mona Lisa have been public domain for a while. Well, actually, the, these above public domain examples are only public domain because they're older than 70 years. So in most countries, the term of protection of copyright expires 70 years after the death of the latest living author or creator. That's why around 2010, we saw multiple Sherlock Holmes TV series and movies being released. Most of the stories of Sherlock Holmes had become public domain. So it was decades after the death of the author, Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. But right now, what's different about right now is for the first time ever, we have the opportunity to build intellectual property with a global community from the beginning by making a project CC0. This concept of global community-driven IP combined with NFT ownership is so new and fascinating. I am so fired up about it because it just... It has huge, who knows where it leads, truly. It could lead in so many directions. And honestly, nobody knows. I've listened to so many experts. I've spoken to lots of people. Truthfully, no one knows. But just consider meme culture for a second, okay? A meme, such as the one uh, with the kid doing the fist pump or the one of Willy Wonka with the smirking face saying, ah, oh, yeah, you think you know, but you don't know. Uh, or the Harembe meme, or the meme of the guy looking like shocked and dismayed. There's so many of these memes, and it's probably easier that you see them versus me describe them. But if you were to look at memes, you would recognize them instantly. You would know them. They're such a part of our culture, and they've been spread vastly. Why is that? It's because a meme is public domain. A meme is CC0, all right? Now, it doesn't mean that any meme is CC0. Most memes are CC0 because they're either super old content that, is in, that has become public domain, or they're usually homemade, which nobody has ownership over, or somebody could have ownership, but they don't try to have ownership over the IP. Often also memes, just people don't care. They just like their stuff being spread. And why is that unique? Well, it's because a meme has the potential to be copied, edited, remade, and spread to millions of people in a very short period of time. That is the massive potential of CC0. With over 4.5 billion people on the internet, we're living in an era where tremendous value is created by mimetic assets. One of the best examples of this is the last two American presidents. First, Barack Obama became president from the meme, Yes, We Can. Then Donald Trump, of all people, became president from the meme, Make America Great Again. Never before have we had the tools and an incentive to develop mimetic assets as we do now. In the past, meme value would not flow back to creators. But now, because of token ownership, value can flow back to the creators, the collectors, and the community members. We also haven't had much high quality contemporary IP in the public domain. Everything in public domain is either hundreds of years old or homemade. CC0 projects have the potential to change that. This will create a library of public domain content, contemporary work from contemporary artists or brands with influence. This is the potential to create a cultural accelerant. We are about to enter the era of composable culture like never before. And there is going to be massive outcomes for the creators that lead in this space. So how do you know if your project should use CC0? Or if you're an investor, how do you know if you should invest in a CC0 project? Simple answer, there is no simple answer. Sorry about that. It depends. There's no 
TLDR on this one, guys. You got to dive deep. There's a lot to understand, a lot to learn, but I'm going to make sure I help you figure it out. So one thing is for sure, for a CC Zero project to be successful, the public needs to care about it. They need to want to proliferate it. The work needs to have cultural cachet. It needs to be a mimetic asset with the potential to successfully propagate. Or in simple terms, it needs to be memeable. If you want to learn from the best, here's a few of the most popular CC Zero projects so far. Nouns, Moonbirds, Goblin Town, MFers, Cryptodes, Blitmap, and Crypto Dick Butts. Yes, you did hear me right. Crypto Dick Butts, if you don't know NFTs and don't know, it is a very large NFT project with a massive community. So since it's so early in the CC0 project, sorry, CC0 experiment, honestly, like there is no playbook. Even all of these guys are experimenting. I would say that Nouns and Moonbirds are the two that I am watching closest. They're the two I'm paying the most attention to. They're also the two that have the biggest piggy banks. So they have the most potential for success. And quite frankly, I believe them to be the most uh, accessible to the world. They're the most memeable in my mind. But honestly, I've never seen a meme of Nouns or Moonbirds. So Who's doing that? I don't know. How are we going to get there? I don't know. So here's what I would say. If I was the founder of a CC0 project, here's a few of the things that I would be focused on in order to ensure my success. First, memetic IP. And I would make sure that my IP is open and widely accessible. Make it available. It needs to be available to copy, to edit, to remake. It needs to be simple to compose the IP. It can't be hidden somewhere. Okay, a great example of this is nouns. There's an open Figma file where you can find all of the nouns traits. Figma, for those who don't know, is a design software. Basically, they have an open document where you can go and take every single one of their traits that is used in their nouns, and you can copy it and reuse it in whatever way you want. Number two thing I would be focused on, I would be focused on building a revenue engine that exists to incentivize those who are not NFT holders to build on top of the project. The challenge with CC0 is, well, if I'm not an NFT holder, why do I want to build on top of the project? Well, I want to build on top of the project if I know that the project drives revenue. If I can see that there is a revenue engine and people are paying money for this project, well, then I will probably use it in my, in my project, or I want to commercialize it as well. The best example I can think of this is cities, okay? Think about city names like New York City, Los Angeles, Paris, Amsterdam, Hong Kong, the biggest cities in the world. They are constantly used in on t-shirts, on lunchboxes, uh, in, in movies and TV shows and books. Why? Because they're huge brands. They're very recognizable. People love them. Now, those city names, those are public domain using those city names. You don't have to pay anybody. You can just permissionlessly use those city names, right? And what is so special about that is why do you use those city names? Because you've seen those cities generate revenue, because you know they're popular, because they're a big deal. And so if I was a CC0 project, that's what I'd be focused on. I'd be focused on, okay, how can I gen show that revenue generation is possible? How can I create a playbook? Because if you can create a playbook, then others will want to copy it. Third thing I'd be focused on if I was a CC0 project founder is I would have a centralized decision maker that is running in parallel to the project that brings persistent value back to the project over the course of decades. The best example of this is Proof and Moonbirds. Now, it's too early to see how this works, how Proof is going to bring value back to the Moonbirds community, but it is clear that they are committed to doing that. And I believe that will be a game changer in what allows Moonbirds to be one of the biggest CC0 projects. 
I will certainly be keeping a close eye on that project. And if you keep listening, I'll make sure I keep you in the loop because I'm a Moonbird holder, so I follow it very closely. Okay, five predictions for the future of NFT IP rights. Oh, I'm fired up about these predictions. Number one, the biggest projects in the next decade will be CC0, the biggest NFT projects. Number two, a Board API Club NFT collector will have their IP license revoked. Number three, there will be a clear playbook for NFT collectors to become millionaires from NFT IP licenses. Number four, trademarks will be granted to derivatives of CC0 projects. And number five, regulation is coming and it will play a big role. Let's dive into each one of these. The biggest projects in the next decade will be CC0. The argument in favor of CC0 most often uses examples of open source knowledge to demonstrate its massive potential. And for good reason. What would the internet be like today if it was controlled by one centralized company? Would there be a technological innovation and economic opportunity on the scale that we've seen? No, certainly not. Thankfully, the creators of the, folk, of the internet focused on building open source composable systems. What did that do? It drove an acceleration of technology development like we've never seen before over the last 30 years. So we've seen firsthand the power of open source knowledge. It's composable, anybody can take it and they can build upon it. And now we have the protocols that we built the internet on, which has led to massive economic potential, massive innovation for so many. Now, if the goal is to optimize, to have global impact, then you must engineer your work to be as networked as possible. You've got to take advantage of the network effect. But this is really, really hard to achieve when you're a startup. You know, it's just, it takes years, years, decades to achieve a network effect. Whereas open source enables a platform to grow by enabling others to develop and grow with you. Ethereum is the best recent example of this. What's amazing about Ethereum is that value is able to flow back to the developers through their token. Past open source knowledge has never been able to drive value, value back to the creators. So we got a big unlock here, which is why big things are coming in the CC0 space. But I want to be clear, I do think that CC0 is going to be harder to be successful in than the more traditional IP path. The reason being, CC0, there's no playbook. It's just an experiment right now. And because there's no playbook and because there's no clear revenue model and because it's decentralized, which means that you have a community working on something, it'll be very hard to be big enough and get scale needed to succeed. So I think the easier path for an NFT project right now, if you're a project founder, the easier path is not to go CC0. The easier path is to control your IP in the beginning. And then perhaps what I would love to see a project do, to be honest, I would love to see a project control the IP in the beginning. And then after five years, maybe two years, I don't know, after a certain time when you've built a community and you are successful and you have a lot of active members in your community, then go to your community and say, hey guys, we think that going to CC0 is a great opportunity. Here's why. And see what they say. The best example of that was Blipmap did this. Uh, I think about a year into their creation, they went to the community. The community, I think unanimously, I know the community voted in favor of it. I don't know if it's unanimous, but the community voted in favor of going CC0. And now that project is soaring. So great example. Here's a really simple example of why CC0 can work. So when Board Ape Yacht Club released the Other Side trailer, they included a noun and a cryptodes in the video. And I'm pretty sure they did this because they just could, because it was so easy. They didn't have to ask anybody. And you have to pick up the phone and be like, hey, you know, so-and-so, can we use your your IP in our video, and then so-and-so is like, oh, I don't know, let us get in touch with lawyers. No, none of that bullshit. They could just use it. And you know what the result was? An instant boost, boost in the floor project of 
floor price of both projects. In particular, cryptos. I remember cryptos went up like 30 to 50% after it was concluded in this trailer. Just a trailer. You know, yes, it's for the other side. Yes, there's a lot of hype behind Yuga Labs and their metaverse, and it's great, and we're all excited. But still, you can see the power and the potential of CC0 in that because anybody can permissionlessly use your IP, well, you get to benefit when they do that. Very exciting. Now, obviously, there's a downside. What if they use your IP in a way that you don't like? Ooh, that's a risk and that's the downside. And there's definitely going to be talk about that to come, but I actually, I'm going to save that for another episode because I got, just got so much to discuss here on this one. Okay. Prediction number two, a board ape yacht club NFT holder will have their IP license revoked. What does this we mean? How's this going to happen? Well, okay. Here's the truth. Most current NFT projects are not granting collectors IP rights they are granting collectors a revocable license. All right, there's a clear difference. This is why Larva Labs was able, was able to sell CryptoPunks and MeBits to Yuga Labs. This is why Yuga Labs is able to modify the licensing rights that they're giving to their community over time. Many collectors, not just of Yuga Labs projects, many collectors of all NFT projects think they have ownership. That is not true. I want to say that again. If you are an NFT collector and you think that you have IP ownership of your NFTs, 90%, I don't even know, 99%, you do not. Very high percentage, you do not, okay? The reason you don't is because it is very difficult to put this into smart contracts. I'm not going to get into the details of that, but currently the way this is done with the large majority of NFT projects that say they are giving you IP ownership, all they are doing is they are licensing you IP with a revocable license, okay? Moonbirds demonstrated this very recently when they made their project CC0. Previously, Moonbirds holders had a license to commercialize their NFT, and then it was gone in a second. The creators of Moonbirds proof changed the IP ownership to CC0 and they did it without permission of the holders. I know because I'm a holder, okay? And you know what? Proof is a massive organization. I mean, I shouldn't massive. They're massive in terms of their, their piggy bank and their treasury. They got a lot of money. They got hundreds of millions of dollars. Their team, I think, is about like 20, 30 people now. Maybe it's more than that, actually. I can't keep track. They keep growing. But I can guarantee you with their financial abilities in their, their piggy bank, I can guarantee you they consult the lawyers. So they just showed how revocable that NFT license is. They want to take it back, they can. So be careful. You're on quicksand. If you're an NFT holder and you think that you have IP ownership, you don't. And someday this is going to be tested in courts. An ape owner will do something that Yuga Labs doesn't like. For example, a partnership with a firearms company or attach themselves to a controversial political campaign or something to do with hate speech. And Yuga has the right to revoke the license. And in this instance, I wouldn't be surprised if they do. Or let's take a more extreme example. And this is never going to happen, but let's just use this as an example. Let's say that Board API Club sells to Disney. Let's say Yuga sells Board API Club to Disney. Okay. Well, Disney, they, they make their money. They live their entire, they made all their success off of controlled IP ownership. Well, some of the most restrictive and most controlled, they're probably the best in the world at controlling their IP. So they don't want to share their IP with these NFT holders. So what are they going to do? They're going to change the licensing agreement. They're going to revoke that license from the NFT holders. Now, I want to be clear here. In this instance, those who have revenue and or a business using an NFT that they previously had a license for, they could probably get a trademark, okay? So great, you can get a trademark. You can probably continue to use that uh, IP in, a, in, a, in, the, in the same way that you've already been using it, okay? 
you wouldn't have this like extended license you can use it in a new way, but you could use it in the same way. Okay, you can get that trademark. But those who have not commercialized their NFT, those who have not used it in any way, would not be able to hold on to those rights. They would lose them if Disney decided to take them away or anyone decided to take them away, okay? Over the next 10 years, these and many other NFT ownership rights will be tested. So keep a close eye on it. You're going to want to keep your ear to the grindstone on this. There's so much that's going to happen in the future. And this is just constantly evolving. Third prediction, there will be a clear playbook for NFT collectors to become millionaires from NFT IP licenses. This is already happening with many major NFT collectors commercializing their NFTs in various ways. And there will be an entire economic ecosystem which develops around NFT collector IP. I mean, it's just, I am absolutely fired up about this. It's so exciting. I think it's going to be, it's just going to be huge how this goes down. It's, you know, think about influencer agencies. Think about how big the creator economy has gotten, how big influencers have gotten. And what has happened? There's a whole economy around it, right? Well, there's going to be a big economy around NFT IP as well. These agencies, there'll be NFT agencies, which they'll develop partnerships for you. They'll commercialize, help you commercialize your IP of your NFTs. They'll bring you collabs. They'll suggest that you create a, uh, a water company off of your cool cat. Like who knows, but it's going to be big. You know, one example I heard recently was an agency that will represent your NFT licenses on YouTube. So they'll ensure that when your NFT is used on YouTube in somebody else's video, that you profit from that content because you own that, you own that NFT and they can prove it through the blockchain. And YouTube is very well set up for content ownership because this is already a huge part of YouTube because every major media company, every major Netflix, Amazon, uh, Warner Brothers, Sony, all the major media and entertainment companies all are already doing this. All the major sporting leagues, NBA, NHL, baseball, all of them, Champions League, all of them have agencies that they hire that have their job is to use their algorithms they've created to go through YouTube to find all of the content that has been taken and reposted and reproduced and copied because that content is not public domain. And they either get that content taken down or they ensure that ad revenue that comes from that content flows back to the original creator. And that same thing will happen with NFT IP. And so much more, which is why NFTs are so fucking exciting. Oh my God, guys, I just, I'm so fired up over here in Paris. Okay, number fourth prediction. Trademarks will be granted to derivatives of CC0 projects. I already touched on this briefly uh, a second ago in the Board API Club example. So I want to be clear. Anyone can commercialize a CC0 project in any direction. However, when you do commercialize a CC0 project, these layer two projects, let's call them, or derivative work can obtain controlled IP ownership rights through trademarks. This is a simple yet important distinction because it grants IP ownership rights to those who build on top of CC0 work. For example, let's say, a, let's say I make a TV show, okay? Uh, and I'm using Moonbirds and I'm gonna call it Greta's Nest. Well then, I can trademark the name Greta's Nest and the content that is created by the show. Even if that includes Moonbirds, I can trademark that content, okay? And then that trademark gives me IP ownership rights over my derivative work, okay? So, and it's super important because it means that CC0 isn't CC0 forever. It can be if you want it to be, but CC0 can also be CC0 layer one, and then layer two can be all rights reserved because you want to own your IP because you created something using this, the public domain work, using that CC0. It's fascinating. And there's going to be a lot of trademark stuff that comes out of that. Fifth prediction, regulation will play a big role. Guys, listen to this. I know we talk about regulation a lot. and I know it's super dull and boring, but this is important. This year, the U.S. Senate asked the U.S. Copyrights and Trademarks Offices to conduct a study about how NFTs and Web3 is going to impact intellectual property. It's happening. 
how is it going to, what's going to happen? All right. And they officially, I believe, launched a study in June. And the work of the study is going to impact legislation in the US Congress for years to come. Now, I've heard that they're focused on customer protection and that there is great concern about licensing. But there's going to be so many facets of this. This is just such a such a huge space with so many factors at play. So what's most important here, everybody, guys and gals, ladies and gents, get your voices heard, participate in this study. They will take public com comment at some part as part of the study. They have not done this yet. I've been watching. I haven't seen it yet. When it does, I will make sure I share it with you guys. You'll be the first to know, okay? Because here's the thing. If we don't take part in this, a bunch of people in Washington who have no idea what NFTs are will start writing laws that are going to affect us all. So we better participate. Okay, in conclusion, I'm going to conclude with an example of how I think CC0 can work. I'm going to use Xcopy as an example. Xcopy, who is one of the most well-known NFT artists, he recently made his all of his works CC0. Now, how do we know if this is successful? Well, if this adds value back to his NFTs and he's making royalties because, well, then CC0 worked. I think we can all agree. NFTs go up. As a result of NFTs going up, Xcopy gets royalties. Everybody wins. Now, let's take an example. Let's say Zara makes Xcopy t-shirts. Let's say, let's say they take his right-click save and they put it on t-shirts. Honestly, you could see this happening. I've already seen it on t-shirts, not Zara t-shirts though. Um, but let's say they do that. Well, what happens when Zara do that? Well, Zara makes a shit ton of money because people are like, these are dope shirts. Wow, what a great design. I love it. All right. Thousands of people are wearing these shirts, probably tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands. Zara is such a massive clothing brand, fashion company. What does that do? It draws more attention to X copy. All right. By drawing more attention, it pushes up the price of X copy NFTs. Now, wouldn't that, that would NFT holders win, X copy wins, everybody wins. But here's the question Would X copy make a partnership with Zara on his own? Probably not. Probably not because it's not authentic. I don't necessarily think that, I mean, maybe Zara and Xcopy, I don't really, I don't necessarily think there's an authentic fit between the two. You put an artist like Xcopy in a room with Zara, you think that they're going to, you know, jive and get along and be like, oh yeah, you totally vibe with our brand. No, most of the time, this is why all these partnership deals are not done by the artist. They're done either by an agent who represents the artist, who is just trying to commercialize the shit out of that artist in order to make money or they're done by the estate after the artist passes away who again are trying to make money and that's when we start to see stuff on lunch boxes and on posters and on t-shirts and on socks and everything like that now i think there is a good question is is that necessarily a good thing if there's just more of the brand out there and it being pushed well, I think it depends on your definition of success and good. You know, in my example right now, what I'm saying is this is going to make more money for X copy and for his NFT holders. Well, obviously that's a massive definition of success, but I think there's another part here. And that part is if people take X copies work and they spread it across the world, then it's hard to imagine that his art will, will become more valuable but more so, it will also be seen by more people. And as a result of that, it will drive more attention to him and his future work, which will thus enable him to increase his influence and increase his impact, which I think you can all agree is really the other definition of success. Look, whatever happens, we are at such an exciting time. This is so much freaking fun. We are playing in a sandbox that has massive potential. And I think that one thing is clear, we all need to get in and play. So 
make sure you jump in the sandbox, get off your butt and have some fun this week. Get involved in the CC0 project, whether it be you know purchasing a CC0 NFT, you could purchase a little noun. I think they're only a couple hundred bucks. Uh, or another one is uh, NARS is a one I'll put in the show notes. They're quite cheap. They're only like 20 bucks. Um, it's a derivative of the nouns project. Cool one you can check out. But let's not forget that in the long run, everything goes to CC0, whether we like it or not. Thanks for listening, everybody. Have yourself a fantastic week. And I will see you next time. Jaybird out. Thank you for listening to Web3 Academy. We hope this helps you along your Web3 journey. If it does, please share this episode and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. By the way, if you have yet to join the Discord community, you are missing out. This is where all the magic happens. This is where we learn, where we ask questions, where we network. Uh, you want to be in there. The link to join is in the description below. And finally, a quick disclaimer. Nothing in this podcast was financial advice. Crypto and Web3 can be risky. You can literally lose it all. In fact, if you invest on account of what we say, you probably will lose it all. So don't do that. In all honesty, the point of this podcast is to remove the noise of markets and price and focus on utility and implementation anyway. So you should not take any of this as financial advice. Thank you, friends, and see you in the next one.